Professor Sri Kumar Rao, an expert and student in happiness. Uh, many thanks for joining us tonight. My pleasure. I define happiness differently from most of the population. We tend to talk about happiness in trivial terms. I had my favorite ice cream and I'm happy. I saw a good movie, so I'm happy. Those things give you flashes of pleasure. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a very deep sense of well-being. The knowledge that you're okay, that you will always be okay, that you cannot not be okay. As long as you're in the human predicament, stuff happens. And when stuff happens, you work and do what you have to do. But while you're doing what you have to do, you still have that underlying knowledge that you are fundamentally okay. That's what I'm talking about. If you want to reach your full potential, you have to have a very deep sense of well-being. Part of the problems we have in the world, both in the United States and uh, everywhere, is that persons are deeply dissatisfied with their state of being. When you're dissatisfied with your state of being, and if enough people are, that's what eventually manifests as war, depression, and all of the stuff that's making us sick. I'm not sure that there is a defining moment, but there certainly is a defining period, which is I was pretty successful in corporate life, didn't like corporate politics, so I went to universities and I thought there'd be no politics in universities, found out how wrong I was. And there was a time when I said, if this isn't the life I signed up for, and if this is all there is to it, then there's something dramatically wrong. And that was my personal low point. And that's when I started thinking more seriously about the times when what I was reading uh, took me to a good place and saying, can I be there more of the time and preferably permanently? That's when I started clapping out. From a very young age, everybody tells us this is the way life works. Your parents, your teachers, your coaches, your peers, you have to do this, so this happens and you can be happy. When you were a kid, you're told to get good grades because if you get good grades, you get into a good college. If you get into a good college, you get a good job and you need to do all of that in order to be happy. So look upon our entire society, you know, all of these advertisements telling you to buy these products so you can be happy. Implicitly and explicitly, subliminally and overtly, this message is being drummed into us all the time. It's embedded in our culture. Purpose is when you, your life, you're living your life for some cause which is bigger than you are. So you're not looking at what is there for me, but you are glad to be an instrument for something which will bring a greater good to a greater community. That's very important. Whatever you cause it has to bring a greater good to a greater community. Tremendous flexibility in both, defining both the greater good and the greater community. But you have to, and that is what gives purpose to your life. Because then all of a sudden, the little you, the fragile ego, really doesn't matter. And when it doesn't matter, then the universe opens up to you. I don't transform lives. I give people very powerful tools which have been developed by masters of great stature. And they understood the human predicament, and they, what they came up with has been tested over the millennia. I've just taken these tools, stripped it of religious culture and other baggage, adapted it so that it's useful to people, very educated people in a post-industrial society, and they absolutely work. So I just share the tools with them, show them how to use it, and they transform, the tools transform lives, and persons who use them will find their lives transformed. I'm just an instrument. I don't try to go over skepticism, because you can't. I, what I basically do is acknowledge the skepticism and say, hey, you know, I was like you too. So you've got a choice and either you're perfectly happy with your life as, as it is, in which case, you know, good luck and there's no point in you being here. Or you recognize that whatever you've tried to make your life better hasn't worked very well. And if that's so, just try these tools and if it works, fine. If it doesn't work, you're no worse off than you were before. And if they're willing to try it, their lives change. You can't do that because everybody is on their own growth path. 
What you can simply do is make them aware of tools, show them that the mental models they're using may be dysfunctional and just hope they pick up. The biggest, best single thing that you can do to make sure that your kids pick up on that is live those values yourself, anchor yourself in that. Uh, Shukumar Rao, many thanks for an uh, interesting cafe, your appearance tonight, it was amazing. <laughs> My pleasure, Max. I had a wonderful time, so thank you. <laughs>